Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to another episode of Baruin Build. Today, we are back, finally back, doing a bit of Minecraft. Last episode, we built this cool piston elevator, and it takes us all the way to the top of the mountainside. As you can see, I have not done anything on the mountainside and that is because i have actually been doing some fun stuff that's down there that conveniently is in the fog and you can't see um but yeah last episode we built this to get to the top of the mountain and this is where the observatory is going to be and i'm very excited for this uh build but i kind of want to this took so long that i'm going to take a small break from this area here and we're going to be working on the town area down below just a bit uh, today's episode is probably going to be a bit shorter. As you saw last episode, I got a new puppy and he is doing great. He is now, I would say, essentially potty trained. Uh, and so we don't have to worry so much about him peeing in the house anymore. But it has made because of his uh, now existence in my house, um, we have to kind of alter how the episodes are going to be going for a little bit just just a little bit until he can get a, a little bit bigger and can kind of climb the stairs and join me in the office um so i've been playing on the steam link that i have downstairs my office is upstairs but i'm playing downstairs and i've actually been doing like editing and stuff too via the steam link because you can do that you can kind of like trick the steam link to sharing your screen rather than just steam so i've been doing everything downstairs and having to just kind of run up and up and down the stairs to do any sort of recording like this so i'm not going to actually be doing much in the ways of talking today um, today's episode is going to be a time lapse of the market area that is down below that you cannot see at all, which is actually really nice and convenient. It's right down there, and I have completed it, and then we're going to take a look at it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into the time lapse, and we'll take a look-see afterwards uh, in first person to kind of get a, get a little talking going on it. So enjoy the time lapse.
right, guys, I am back. We are done with the stuff that we did in that time lapse. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I've been doing some more work even afterwards, but here you can see the stuff we've done coming up into the distance here. And firstly, I want to say I've been working on the pathway and have gotten it not all worked out here. Obviously, the texturation and stuff is not all the way up. Started on it, but didn't get all the way going. Uh, I did detail this entire cave out, and I think it looks really cool. This is kind of like a, it's supposed to be, I would say it's more like walking type of cave. It's not something that you would bring a cart up, but it is a cool little just cave walk through this little cliff area. I thought that was cool. I'm going to do this sort of thing on the other side as well. Um, in the cliff, I will be doing stuff too as well, just haven't gotten around to that. But this is what it, what the cave looks like. Stone slabs, stone stairs for the wind because that makes this look so much more natural and it's great. Using stone cutters as kind of a cool lamp holder and I think it looks really nice. Um, and then also now I can fully just run up this staircase without having to deal with it. And oh, it's so nice. Very, very nice. Um, and as you can see, I've been incorporating a little bit of a sort of granite mushroom block brick and terracotta mixture right down there. And I'm going to add those that sort of splash of color intermittently along the path just to like mix it up from this sort of uh, just grayness. And I think it's going to be great. Uh, I think it's going to look really, really nice. It makes it so it's so much more interesting to view like it just adds a pop of color but i want it to be intermingled like this not to be like taken over or anything just to be a part of it i've also been starting to do the texturization down this away and uh this the this is gonna go up even higher like up there is probably gonna be more like at that that tree level right there that's where i want houses to be there so i want this kind of to be almost like it goes up and around and back down Oh, and then this, I was gonna finish this out because I want this to be like that. Boom. So it kind of mixes in together. I think it looks nice. And that is the, kind of the, the color palette. Bricks replace stone, terracotta replaces cobblestone, etc., etc. And I think it looks really nice. But let's take a look at what we've built. So I'm not fully done quite yet with the outer wall. I just kind of have it marked out but the inside is looking good. So we've got some stalls here. This is supposed to be kind of like a nice little marketplace centered around this big tree. And so we've got sort of a book salesman or book book and or bookshelves, paper, etc. This was a, a feature I thought was kind of nice. Every single one has a book here for like keeping of records and stuff for sales and all that. I thought that was looked very, very cool. Uh, so we've got books and then this is sort of like an elixir store. Uh, that's kind of the suspicious stew. And it kind of to me looks like what an elixir would look like. So I've kind of added in some different things that I think could go into those elixirs and then made this sort of like weird potions being brewed or what have you and things growing. And I love it. I think it looks really, really nice. Also, this is a fun thing, adding beds to this these builds makes it a little bit adds like a color half slab that we don't have in the game. I thought that was a unique way of using beds. I thought it was kind of cool. This is a fish, a fresh fish, fresh fish slash man. That's a tongue twister. You can buy live fish or you can buy dead fish. Essentially, that's what I was trying to say. So this is the fish area and kind of cool you can go up on this side as well and there are even more fishies inside there i think that looks very very cool and this walkway does extend all the way around here then we've got some pumpkins and melons going on here this is a very nice little area here and i for some reason pumpkins i wish the bottom had a different texture kind of to me seems strange to have the stem on the bottom but i guess maybe i have block states wrong or something this is an epic tree and I really I never build trees like you know me we probably built like four trees custom in this world and I think this one turned out great I am so happy with it um, so essentially what I tried to do was make it more realistic than what you sometimes see um, and so by that I mean like the branches are exposed on the inside of the trunk area and then the leaves are on the outside like you don't usually see leaves 
fully growing all the t- like all the way to the trunk. Um, and so I tried to incorporate that a bit. There's also a bit of a gradient going on. There are spruce leaves at the bottom giving a darker texture than acacia leaves in the middle, giving a sort of middle green texture. And then on the top is birch, which is supposed to be like the the leaves that are catching the light. And so they add a little bit of a lightness factor to it. And it really helps round it out, I think. I think it makes it look very nice. And I, I really do like how it's turned out. I think that leaf sort of thing that I've come up with is very cool. And so it's, it's a little weird shaped, but you know, trees are weird. Trees are not a a easy thing to build in Minecraft, and I think we have done quite a good job here. All right, back into the thick of things. I think it looks good. I am very happy with the tree, and uh, the composter also goes well. I don't know exactly what it is, but I just, it was a detail I thought added a lot to the tree without having to do much in the ways of uh, effort. And uh, so this is the sort of fertilizer stall is what I was thinking. Uh, so we've got the bone meal, the actual fertilizer type of thing in Minecraft. And then this I was taking as kind of like manure and it's just cocoa beans, but it's like manure. And so we've got the composters here making the bone meal and then the manure there to be able to, I guess maybe you could say make the bone meal because I think you can compost those things. Then this is a fun shop that we, I, I kind of just had the idea and then that's why we made the bee farm over here, which is very rudimentary, very rough and definitely not good. Um, but it's been, I mean, it's farming automatically pretty efficiently. Uh, the bottles are a pain in the butt because I don't have a good system for it. Essentially, I just have these bottles that are collecting the this uh, hives honey. And uh, because this fires every single time a bee comes in and out, a bee comes in and out quite often. So the bottles actually get spat out quite a bit. Uh, so only collected four blocks worth of honey, but you know, that's okay. I don't really need them. I wanted one block to be able to make this stall have a little globule of honey right here. And so this is kind of just a small honey stall. I thought this was cool. It doesn't need to be big, but it could be a little stall that we have. And it's a fun thing. I There are seriously so many honey, uh, not honey, beehives over there. It's crazy. Maybe those are bee nests beehives, bee nests, what have you, where bees live. There are tons of bee homes over that way. And it like, I mean, like maybe 15 in the vicinity of like one flower forest. It's pretty insane. This shop is kind of like your odds and ends knickknack type of shop. So we've got like a random enchanting potion I found from a shipwreck, I think. Then magma cream for all of your lotion needs, a random note block, idle thingamajiggy, and then name tag and a item frame in an item frame. And this one's kind of fun. It's a little bit bigger because they, they probably offer a little bit more uh, in terms of stock. So they need a little more space. So it expands out into the walkway here just a bit. And you can actually order from down there or up here. That was kind of a cool idea. And then inside the stall, we have a barrel. And then we've got some various things. So you can get a treasure map. You can find a clock, a nautilus shell, pistons, all sorts of just random stuff. And I thought that was a fun thing to add. And so that's really all that I did in the time lapse. The only other thing that I've been working on is this. Uh, so because I raised the road up here, it was a little weird interacting with the melon farm. So I went ahead, the road was raised up perfectly to this uh, height here, which I didn't actually plan, but it worked out that way. So what I've done is I'm making the road kind of bridge over this area here and we'll connect up onto this level here and go up as a, you see the slab line that goes right there. Um, and so it connects up here and then we can have a lower road from that house that goes along this way. And this allows us to have access to the melon farm I built a little tunnel here. And we, I may put glass or I may not put anything over this. It's just a nice little sky opening here to keep it light. Um, I am going to be having to actually make this uh, feed into these composters or something because, or feed into a composter thing underneath the farm because this is quite full. I mean, the pumpkins are already like filled up to here. The melons are all filled up here and here. They, it's just like starting to super fill up. And so I'm gonna have to clean this out 
and get it so that it doesn't like overflow. And essentially all the melons and pumpkins that are gonna be going into this will be making bone meal. Um, and just so that we are constantly filled up on supplies here, and then anything that is back flowed into this, these chests here can be put into composters. And so I thought that was a fun idea. So I'm gonna figure out a road that it goes along this way, along the cliff side there, and then goes down into this area here. And that, I think, is about it, guys. Oh, that is looking epic as well. And I think, yeah, that's about it. I think I have babbled on enough. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I know there was quite a bit of time-lapse stuff, and I know time-lapses aren't, like, our major thing here. But for right now, with the puppy and stuff, it's just the best way I can do things. So I will try and do my best at making it entertaining. Um, and I hope you, yeah, hope you enjoy the content and look forward to the next episode. I think we're going to work on this blacksmith area here. I've got a cool idea for a house and I really want to go ahead and start building it. So without further ado, I'll let you guys go. I hope you have enjoyed the episode. Leave a like in real life if you have enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next episode. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>